Microbiology. What is it? Microbiology. I have one definition. Study of organism that we cannot see with. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. That is true. Who is going to give me another definition? There are several definitions of microbiology. That is one good definition. Who is going to give me another one? You know that. Even if your head is down, I can still see you. <laughs> Question? Um, science that studies microorganisms. Good. Science that deals with the study of microorganisms. Another good definition. All right. Good. This is another one. Microbiology, a branch of biology that deals with scientific study of microorganisms. Kendrick, example of a microorganism, please. Um, bacteria. Good. Bacteria. Okay. Example of microorganism is bacteria. Okay, I have two examples of microorganisms. Number one, bacteria. Is it singular or plural? Bacteria. Singular. Singular. Bacteria. Bacteria. I heard another one. Fungi. Fungi. Okay. Fungi. Singular or plural? What is singular? Fungus. Another? Virus. Another organism. Algae. Fungi. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Algae. 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 I don't know, maybe I'm pronouncing wrong. Right. Parasite. Mm -hmm. Paras okay. Parasite is a characteristic. Oh, living inside the organism. Yeah, right. It could be bacteria. Vector. Pardon? Vector. Vector is a characteristic. Spirochete? is a Bacteria too. Okay. <laughs> I think there is another this is one. Good example. This is a good example. How many of these are living? All of them? Except minus. Now, let's do one. <coughs> let's take 
take a glass of milk.
So what is it? Is it virus living or dead? Virus is living because it can reproduce in a proper, appropriate living host. Viruses, they are living because they can reproduce in a proper, appropriate living host. And why are they dead? They cannot self-reproduce. They cannot self-reproduce. Why can't they self-reproduce? Anybody? There's no hope. There's no hope. Viruses, why can't they reproduce on their own? They use... They don't have any intracellular structures. They have no cytoplasm. They have uh, no enzymes, nothing. They have nothing inside them. They have no mechanism to reproduce. That's why they need a host. Oh. So organisms such as bacteria, we talked about that. Study of bacteria, bacteriology. Organisms such as fungi. Oh, study of fungus is called fungology. Not <laughs> Michael. Like is a Greek word meaning fungus. Mycology. Mycology. If someone has athlete's foot, or a lady who may have yeast infection, all these fungal diseases are collectively called what? Mycosis. Mycosis. Fungal diseases. All fungal diseases collectively, we call them mycosis. Mycosis. Virus, virology, parasite. Pause here, you said that, right? What's a parasite? Uh, intracellular living. Is it? Oh, they're, they're living. They're living off the other. Parasite. An organism that requires another organism to live. Like, are bacteria parasites? Yeah. Number one STD in the United States is what? Uh, no. No. Chlamydia. 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 If you try to grow on a petri dish, chlamydia. That's a parasite. Um, syphilis. Parasite. E. coli. Staph. Those are not parasites. Viruses. All. All of them, they are parasites. There are some fungi that are parasitic, but most bacteria they are non-parasitic. They don't need a living host to grow. So parasite is, it could be unicellular, or it could be multicellular. Give me an example of a parasite that is multicellular. Multicellular. Worms, exactly. Worms. If you go to, let's say, TGIF, or your favorite restaurant, and you order the steak, beautiful steak, okay. Medium rare, please. Or just rare, please. And it has some beautiful saute onion on it. Okay. And one of this onion is a little crunchy. <laughs> what do you think that was? Tapeworm. But that's not how humans get tapeworm. How do humans get tapeworm? Barefoot. <laughs> That's how you get hookworm. If you step on dog feces or cat feces, 
and that's how you get hookworm virulent. Tapeworms you get by eating uh, undercooked beef. Okay. If the beef you are eating has cysts of tapeworm. Okay. Uh, within about 10 to 14 days, that cyst in the beef is going to turn into the hook. Teenage mutant ninja hook is going to come out <laughs> and is going to attach to the mucous membrane of the intestine. And once you have the hook, you have them for life. It will not come off. And it can turn into 25, 30 foot long worm. You have them for life. They cannot kill you as long as your, your diet is balanced. You can go to Cheesecake Factory every single day. Really, because the food that you eat, they will get part of your food. They, will, they don't have digestive system. They suck up your pre-digested food. Okay. And it will just keep on growing and growing and growing. The mature part will just keep on falling off. Okay. You want to see the worms in your beef? Can I show you? In a minute. Okay, I will show you. <laughs> so you get it from seeding okay. uh, undercooked beef. My question to you is, if you can see the worm with your naked eye, why is that worm included in microbiology? Because you got it from eating the cyst, not by eating the worm. It's the cyst that got into our body was microscopic. Insects. What kind of insects? Scabies, you can actually see the, the insect crawling under your skin. Mm -hmm. But we are talking about diseases that are transferred by the insects. Like for example, malaria caused by mosquito. No, no, that's one of the questions that many students miss on this. Malaria is not caused by the mosquito. Mosquitoes are areas. It's caused by a protozone called Plasmodium virus. Like in the summertime, you hear some people are they are died of encephalitis, right? Because it is caused by not by a mosquito. With mosquitoes they carry a virus called arbo virus. Um, deer tick. You have heard of deer tick, right? Deer tick. Deer bites and it transmits the tick to the humans. Right? Oh, like Lyme disease? No. Deer tick. Deer tick bites. Not the deer bites. <laughs> but I've seen on TV deer biting and kicking the, the hunters. So. Another story. <laughs> so the deer tick bites the person, and there's a bacteria that lives in the mouth of that deer tick. It's called Borrelia burgdorferi. Don't worry about the name today. <laughs> that causes what disease? Lyme. Lyme disease. L Y M. Lyme disease. So we are talking about the insects that carry the microorganisms in their mouth. Uh, protozoans, protozoans, amoebas. Some amoebas are live in the vagina of the finger. That's the normal flora. You don't even know if they live there. But other amoebas, they live in the ponds, dirty water. If you swim in that, a few years ago, it was on news, channel 10 I heard, a little kid was swimming in Crystal Lake in Pampano. Amoeba, little amoebas. They crawl through his nose to the brain. The kid died. You have to be careful. And <clears throat> if you drink dirty water, you can get a whole lot of other types of uh, worms too. Let me show you. Some pictures are very graphic, so. <coughs> you are going to be nurses, so you may want to think twice. You want to be going to be nurses. And other. Okay. We're going to start with, what was I going to show you? Beef, Beef first. Okay. Says, uh, Yeah. 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 Yeah.
my um, garlic cloves. <laughs> <laughs> These are cysts of paper to make sure you, of course you're not going to eat this. Good thing is in America most beef is, is good. So don't go to a cheap steakhouse. Even if you cook it? If it has to be great, great. If it is pink, it's not destroyed. If it is gray, it is destroyed. So if you ingest multiple cysts, does that mean you'll get multiple cysts? Multiple worms. Oh. <laughs> but remember, there was a doctor in Chicago uh, in the early 70s who used to sell a diet pill. And guess what was it in that diet okay. pill? Yeah, Remember, it cannot kill you. I mean, if you ingest tape worms, you will lose weight. Holy mackerel. How many of you watch House? Or used to. Yeah. Uh, there was a program on house. It can travel to your brain, sure. Paper? Of course. Yeah. If it ends up in blood, it can go to your brain. And it still can't kill you? Mm -hmm. In the brain, it could. <laughs> this is the actual <laughs> <laughs> electron microbiome. You see, these are three <laughs> which are in the <laughs> right here. These pretty eyes are no eyes. These are suckers that suck up your nutrients. <laughs> Tapeworm. Now I'm going to show this picture that I'm going to show you. Um, have you have seen people scratching their behind all the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're kids, they have right? Worms. Pinworm is the most common worm in the United States. Pinworm. Okay. Uh, and kids get them from playing in the, the sandboxes, in the playgrounds, right? And they get these. Let me just show you. Oh, this is very gross. Shut up. All right. This is the anal opening. And these are the thin worms. They look like rice grains. Right? Okay, that's why. This is where it likes to grow. Okay? To, to grow. In the anal area because it's humid and it's. it's that's why kids, people are always scratching their behind. Okay? And the best way to diagnose it is scotch tape method. When the, the person is at sleep or relaxed, you take a piece of scotch tape and a magnifying lens and a flashlight, open the buttock area, stick the scotch in. Yeah. Really? <laughs> 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 stick the scotch tape in the perianal area and you will see the eggs and the worm on the scotch tape. One time I made a mistake of saying that when the person is at sleep and one of my smart hand students said, oh, Professor Khan, but where they live is always nighttime. So how does the worm know it's not nighttime? <laughs> <laughs> always nighttime where the worm is. It's so. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is the. This is how. This is right here the worm. Only females have pin-like tail. That's why it's called pinworm. Thank 
free and dirty um, McDonald's or Burger King or Sand Boxes. They pick up these eggs under their nails and, and they put them in the mouths. If they have kids, then they come home after playing in the playgrounds. Make sure that you clean as soon as they get home. Wash their hands, please. With soap and water. And it's highly contagious. If, if your kid has pinworms, make sure, please, uh, separate their toiletries and uh, bed sheets and uh, etc. The granddaddy of pinworm, it can transfer from one organ to another. It's called Ascaris lumbricoides. Mm -hmm. It can make its own hole. It can leave the intestine and go to another organ. Ascaris lumbricoides. <clears throat> First of all, this is the egg of Ascaris. <clears throat> Drink dirty water contaminated with the eggs. This is how you acquire it. Oh my god. This child is deceased. Oh my god. You can see it's coming out from his mouth and nose and all that. Yep. And this is. Anybody new Chinese noodles? <laughs> oh my heavens. I have to show you one more. Pro, pro, beef, 
before correlation. Before initial carry out carry out meaning not <clears throat> before there was a nut inside the cell what is the nut of the cell nucleus before there was a nucleus, what was there? Before the nucleus, before the nucleus, there was DNA. There was no nucleus, but there was DNA. There was no, or you can say there was no true nucleus. There was DNA. Or there was nuclear material. Nuclear material. And in prokaryotes, this nuclear material is also called nucleoid. This is one major difference. One major difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. As the light evolved, oh, by the way, only two types of organisms are included under prokaryotes. All bacteria, all bacteria, they lack nucleus. They don't have a Nucleus. They only have nuclear material or DNA. And cyanobacteria. Blue green algae. Blue green algae. Everything else, plants, green algae, animals, fungi, second category. Eukaryotes. You means true. True. True nut. These are the cells that have a true nucleus. So, Professor, all bacteria are prokaryotes? All bacteria are prokaryotes. <laughs> all bacteria are prokaryotes. <laughs> After evolution, what happened? An envelope developed. And what is this envelope? Nuclear membrane. That's right. Nuclear membrane. Nuclear membrane. still has its DNA or nuclear material inside. But you cannot call this nucleoid. Nucleoid means no membrane. Nucleoid means no membrane. You can call it nuclear material or DNA. We cannot call this nucleoid. Nuclear simply means nuclear material without the nucleoid. What else can you call this? Nucleus. Nucleus. You can call this structure. Nucleus. So 
So life on this planet Earth is not possible without a nucleus. True or false? Life on this planet Earth is not possible without a nucleus. False. False. All bacteria may lack a nucleus. How about life without nuclear material is not possible without on this planet? That's true. You need nuclear material. <coughs> Sure. <coughs> eukaryotes. Eukaryotes do not have nucleoid. True or false? True. Because they have membrane. Prokaryotes have nucleoid because they don't have membrane. As long as the nuclear material is enclosed in a membrane that is a nucleus. If you remove the membrane, that is nucleus. Any questions? How about this question? Maybe not. No. 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 Most of you are saying no. Anybody? Yes. Can you live without microorganism on this planet? No. No? Tell me one reason or one role of microorganism on this planet. To help us with digestion. Help us with digestion. Okay. Yeah. What if I take probiotics? That's good though. Oh. I like that. I'm Think at a bigger scale. Yeah, seed. Seed. Oxygen, seed two. Seed two. Decomposition. Yeah, decomposition. <clears throat> How long have humans have been living on this planet? Millions of years? In a very long time. How much waste have been created over those years? How many people have died? How many animals have died? How many plants have decayed? Here's all that waste. When you go to sleep, you may not notice that the little alien chips come. <laughs> 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 that's what my order is. They are nature's scaling. They clean up the planet for us. Without my organism, life is not possible. Look at your, yourself. When the baby is born, okay. you think this is all new? When the baby, when the baby is born, you think that all that material is new? It is new, but the material is all recycled. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen. All recycled material. Millions and trillions of years old. This is all recycled. This is what microorganisms do. Recycling. Decomposition. So the major beneficial uh, roles of microorganisms. Number one, the most important is decomposition. Conversion of organic compounds. Organic compounds. Anybody give me the definition of organic compounds? Nathaniel, you want to try? Uh, okay. Organic compound is a compound that has carbon in it. What else? You have to have three, three, three elements together to make an organic compound. Oxygen. Oxygen. Must have carbon. Oxygen and hydrogen together to make organic compound, and they are mostly associated with life, like living things. Okay. <coughs> CHO, CHO. Microorganisms, they're we can use them, or we have been using them, to clean up, clean up our planet. 
they made a big mess in uh, Alaska 70 years ago. The Adis. Remember? And just last year, Gulf. Yeah. Right. So they use a bacterium called Pseudomonas to clean up, to eat this oil. Mm -hmm. better than spilling more chemicals on top of oil. There are bacteria that can eat up oil and other toxic chemicals. Sewage treatment. <clears throat> Conversion of sewage water into drinking water. 99% of the sewage is water. So they take the sweet water, put it underground, treat it with bacteria after a couple of years. You bring it up. If the water is given to you, you will not be able to tell the difference if it is tap water or your community water or sweet water. Some communities are already doing it. Uh, as I told the class yesterday, uh, in Texas, Human raw sewage is being added to chicken feed. It's called feces farming. Oh my Feces farming. Sorry. <laughs> it is legally allowed in in Texas to add human feces to chicken feed. Oh my god. I'm not making it up. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I had heard before that they can use sewage water to, as a fertilizer. Farm. But yeah, in, in Texas, who did it when you go home? The term is feces farming. Okay, bad. Before, they were using what? Cow's brain to feed cows, their own brain. So they got mad. Mad cows. <laughs> so they were feeding, really, they were feeding cows' brain as a nutrition to cows. It was bad practice, okay. but this is just too much. This, this is just simply wrong. So is there a sewage treated water used in the U.S.? No. Okay. Yeah, because in Australia a few years ago, because of the drought, the government wanted to do that, and the people people were against it, and they didn't accept it. Eventually, we have to do this. The way we are using our resources, we are going to deplete yeah. them. So we have to. And I don't think the, our officials will tell us. They will just give it to us. Mm -hmm. Like, we are buying our bottled water is what? Many of the bottled waters are just tap water. We just say purified water, and we happily pay them, and we buy our water back. Exactly. And you make such a waste of these plastic bottles. Are they treating the feces before they treat it? Of course. I hope not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are, and because bacteria grow much faster than human cells do, like for example, E. coli, bacteria, very common bacteria. Its generation time is about 20 minutes to 30 minutes. If you have 1 million E. coli now, in about 40 to 30 minutes, you'll have 2 million. So if you want to make vitamins or hormones, you take the gene okay, from humans, you can insert it in bacteria. So, so that's what scientists are doing. They're taking the genes and inserting them in bacteria to produce vitamins and hormones that are much faster. And of course, last but not least, you cannot make your donuts and bread, okay, or your cheeses, okay, without microorganisms. If you want to make bread at home, what do you use? Yeast. If you don't need yeast, okay, it's not going to rise because when you when you eat yeast to the bread, okay, to the uh, flour, it makes two things: CO2, carbon dioxide, it causes the dough rise, and then it produces 
alcohol that gives the aroma. Okay. All the cheeses, beverages, and all that. <clears throat> so those are the good things about microorganisms. Oh, sorry. Okay. Why don't we stop here and we'll continue next time? Okay. Good.